The Ansiscope HRV Monitor. The following is a demonstration of two highly accurate ansiscope measurements of the autonomic nervous system, better known as ANS. These measurements maximize the effectiveness of P-STEM therapy. The first measurement, the autonomic dysfunction test, establishes the patient baseline ANS reading. The second measurement for sympathovagal balance provides guidance for accurate P-STEM needle placement and treatment monitoring. Before the patient arrives, prepare a clean workplace with all P-STEM contents and supplies on a sterile drop cloth. This includes the P-STEM and ANSYSCOPE plus the following items. Tech gel adhesive, prep and stay, multi-point stylus, patient tracking sheet, cotton tip applicators, sterile tweezers, alcohol pads, scissors, blood pressure cuff, sterile drop sheet. Prepare the multi-point stylus. Remove the outer casing of the multi-point stylus. Insert the battery and reassemble. Clean the tip with an alcohol pad. Screw the end cap one quarter turn clockwise. Press the tip to engage the red light to assure the stylus is properly functioning. Clean the tip with an alcohol pad. Once the P-STEM placement is complete, remove the battery to save battery life. Prepare the P-STEM. Transfer the white label from the back of the P-STEM control module to the patient tracking form. Remove the protective tabs on the P-STEM control module and push the batteries into the control module to activate power. Attach the protective cover. Slightly peel back the adhesive cover behind the control module and touch the device to create an electrical ground. Insert the multi-point stylus into one of the needle ends. Press the stylus to test if the P-STEM is working properly, listening for a small tapping sound under the high-pitch sound. Trim the extra sheet material around the P-STEM. Attach the P-STEM needles to the wires using the red insertion device that comes with the multipoint stylus. Two of the needles are for general pain. One is placed near the top of the ear and the second at the bottom of the ear. The third needle is placed based on the patient's type of pain. Refer to the acupuncture chart to determine which pressure point on the ear is correct for their specific pain. This patient is being treated for back pain. Patient treatment. The autonomic dysfunction measurement is taken as a baseline. This measurement is performed in the patient's first and last visit. Ideally, this measurement should be performed every fourth visit to monitor treatment progression. Patient instructions. Prior to the treatment, patients must fast for two hours, eliminating all food, exercise, smoking, and liquids except water. This measurement is not permitted for patients with pacemakers. The measurement takes approximately 15 minutes. Have the patient turn off their cell phone. In a quiet room, position the patient comfortably on their back. Shoes and socks are okay, as long as their ankles are exposed. With the snap electrodes in place, connect the designated cables to the patient's inner wrists and ankles. Select the data button on the ansiscope. Enter the patient's name, sex, and age. Minimally, you must enter the patient's age to activate the ansiscope. Select Next. Since the electrodes are attached, select Next. Look for high R peaks. Use the gain and or lead functions as needed to get a high R peak. Select Start Test. Note the time left on the patient display. When the test is complete, select OK. Record the patient's autonomic dysfunction level on the patient tracking form. Ansiscope test for assessing sympathovagal balance. 
This test is used to optimize P-STEM placement and is kept on during the entire P-STEM procedure, which takes approximately 15 minutes. Step 1. Patient Tracking Form Record the patient's pain level and blood pressure on the patient tracking form. Step 2. Ansiscope Function With the ansiscope attached to the patient as demonstrated in the previous measurement, select the Data button and enter patient data. Select Online and then Start. In about 30 seconds, the sympathovagal balance trajectory will appear. Draw the trajectory pattern on the pre-placement ANS activity section of the patient tracking form. Also, estimate the values of the left and right edges of the trajectory. In this example, the left edge is plus 18, and the right edge is approximately plus 37. Step 3. Prepare the ear. Thoroughly clean the ear using an alcohol pad. Clean well behind the ear to remove oils and dirt to assure proper adhesion of the P-STEM control module. Apply prep and stay to the area just cleaned. Step 4. Place P-STEM. Apply tack gel to the back of the P-STEM control module. Place the P-STEM control module behind the ear with the wires pointing down. Press and hold the module for 30 seconds to assure proper adhesion to the skin. Step 5. Placing the needles. Using the multipoint stylus, locate the first needle location by pressing the tip into the ear. Listen for a high-pitched sound, which indicates proper needle placement. A low-pitched sound indicates a poor location. Tap the ANS index box with the stylus. Glance at the SIM level on the ansiscope. Mentally note its location, then apply the first needle. The SIM level should rise and then drop back to the original level prior to needle placement. Ask the patient if they are experiencing any pain. If pain is present, remove the needle and repeat the placement procedure. Repeat this process for the remaining needles. Taping the P-STEM. Cover each needle with the oval adhesives. Using Tagaderm, tape the wires to the patient's neck. Position the second piece of Tagaderm tape over the P-STEM control module, noting where the tape covers the wire insertion point. Using scissors, cut the Tagaderm tape around this area to avoid covering the wire insertion point of the device. The device will not operate properly if the wire insertion point is covered with tape. Step 7. Patient Tracking Form Leave the patient in position with the needles in place for a few minutes. Draw the trajectory onto the post-placement ANS activity section of the patient tracking form and record the numeric values of the left and right edges on the form. The trajectory will reflect patient improvement over the full course of P-STEM treatment as it moves towards the parasympathetic. Upon completion of the tracking form notations, exit the sympathovagal measurement by selecting the forward icon then select OK to stop processing. Select Cancel when asked to view the static BAL ANS and select the exit icon. Remove the electrodes and turn off the ansiscope to save battery life. Step 8. Final Patient Instructions Have the patient wait at least 15 minutes to assure they are pain-free and not experiencing excessive discomfort. Remind the patient not to wash their hair and keep the device dry while bathing. Tell the patient exactly when to remove the device. This should be four days after the placement. There are virtually no side effects from P-STEM treatment. However, some patients may experience adverse symptoms from overstimulation. These symptoms may include dizziness, nausea or vomiting, increased pain, elevated heart rate and or blood pressure, excessive perspiration. To reduce overstimulation, remove one or two of the needles. The patient can do this without an office visit. Simply have them cut the wire to the needles. Managing medication. P-STEM treatment can take 21 to 28 days to affect the body's endorphin production. Therefore, maintain medication regimens for at least four weeks after P-STEM treatment has begun. 
highly effective non-narcotic pain relief is now available through the combination of the Diansis Ansiscope HRV monitor with pulse stimulation therapy, PSTEM.